impressive list of speakers. Okay, so this joint work with Christian Bastek from VZB Berlin. Uh, so I will actually present like uh, results from two papers. I mean, I will not present everything, but uh, this is actually a talk I gave uh, two weeks ago in Edmonton in Alberta. I will also try to give some insights for people who are not experts in matching. Okay, so what we are considering is um, uh, well, a random assignment of indivisible objects with strict preferences, right? So everybody has a, wants to have at most one object. You have a strict preference. Uh, I mean, any object might have a fixed monetary payment, but you cannot change it. Uh, and then, okay, there are many real life applications like on campus housing organization. Now, because we don't have any money, we know that our oh, deterministic assignment is unfair, we need to randomize. But also at the same time, okay, once we have lotteries, we think of expected utilities, but uh, still in real life, we only use ordinal rankings of objects for for deciding how to assign. Right? So we don't use expected or don't use utilities. Right? All right. So we want to design random mechanisms which the agents report ordinal rankings truthfully and stretch it to weekly dominance. Stretch it. But once you go here, I mean, when you have stretchy proofness, you have got lots of impossibilities, right? I will, no, but, uh, depends what efficiency notion you use or what kind of uh, symmetry notion or equal treatment of equal sequence, okay? But then those efficiency notions are maybe too strong. I mean, when you have a uh, I will explain some of them, or also sometimes you just have symmetry, but this is also sometimes too weak because this only holds when you have uh, equal preferences, but at the same time, uh, you want to randomize because uh, uh, people, or because deterministic assignment is unfair, right? Now, what we do, well, it, uh, Basic data suggest we keep stretchy proofness, have envy freeness, and then uh, explore the efficiency front. Right. Or how if exposed efficient can we be? And then in the current working paper, uh, we look at stretchy proofness. We have some other requirements, but we look at the efficiency front here of mechanism. So different, so meaning that you consider Pareto domination among mechanisms, meaning that at any profile, one mechanism should be weakly better. Pareto domination. Yeah. And so the other one is just for one. Right. So the stacks of what we do, where well, we have just unanimity. So meaning that uh, when everybody ranks a different, we have always n objects and n agents, each agent ranks a different object. Uh, first, right? So then we can just give to everybody his most preferred object. Look at unanimity. This is the weakest efficiency requirement, right? Uh, but you will already see we need to weaken it, or, or when you have at least um, one assignment, you could weaken it to Q unanimity, right? Q unanimity means that you don't get it for sure, but at least this probability Q. Then when you have zero unanimity, this is like a void requirement. This is satisfied by any mechanism. And then, okay, look at stretch improvements and envy freeness. How much unanimity can we get? And we show our main result is that you cannot get more than two over n. So n is the number of people. You cannot go beyond two over n to get an impossible. And while well, you can replace it by post-Q efficiency, and 
but for two over n, you get it, uh, but you have to have a new mechanism. Uh, okay, a minute. Then, uh, uh, in the second paper, well, what is re frequently used is a random serial dictatorship, right? So the serial dictatorship, again, is just, okay, you pick an order of agents, right? So the first agent comes in, picks his most important or preferred object. The second one comes in, uh, picks his most preferred one among the remaining ones, and so on. And then, because of course, uh, the first guy has an advantage, you randomize or you choose with equal probability any of those rankings, right? And then you get random selection. That is a natural mechanism that is used very often. It satisfies some nice criteria. It's symmetric, it's cost efficient, it's stretchable. It's also bounded in variance. So under the variant, uh, yeah, term and the main result for the second uh, paper is that any mechanism satisfying the last three properties, so not necessarily symmetry, but exposed efficiency, stretch improvements and bounded invariant cannot be Pareto dominated by a stretch improvement and bounded invariant. Just in some sense, okay, this also implies that the uh, RSD cannot be prohibited. Uh, which is, even though you would think, okay, maybe this is difficult or this straightforward, but it's, it's actually not. And it's even known that when you allow for, okay, what we always consider, we consider the no disposal domain, so you always rank all objects acceptable. But you don't have an outside option, let's say. And then, uh, uh, you may, once you, you allow objects to be unacceptable, you can parate to them. Or RSD, which was shown by Erdo in 2014. But those mechanisms, they violate. Okay, I will go to the model. So you have a set of agents, right? Okay. Uh, then you have a set of objects. So n agents and objects always the same uh, cardinal, uh, the same number. All objects are different. Uh, and then any agent has just a strict reference for objects. Right? Being unassigned is always at the bottom for the talk. Right? And then the profile is just a list, and you have always the now an um, assignment is is a is a well, it just assigns objects to agents. No two agents receive the same objects, right? And then let mu be the set of then efficiency as usual, okay. Weak efficiency, well, this is like where everybody should be strictly better off with some alternative assignment. And then, okay, random assignment, okay, so we, we just take probability distributions over assignments, right? And then, but of course, for an agent, I mean, he doesn't care about the exact distribution, he just cares about this marginal distribution, which probabilities gets his object, so PIA is the associate probability of I being assigned, right? And let support P be the support, but then it's exposed efficient if uh, the support is a subset of the, exposed, of the efficient assignment, post weak efficiency, <laughs> then you have a uh, stochastic dominant. <laughs> So uh, this is a weak upper counter set of uh, i at x. So pi or i dominates qi stochastically. 
but if for any object, well, the probability on the weak upper counter set is greater or equal to for the other uh, distribution. This also just means, I mean, you recall, okay, so for any cardinal polynomial amongst the representation of this ordinal ranking, the expected utility of pi should be greater or equal than the expected utility of pi. Okay, and again, remember this. I mean, in real life, mechanisms just require uh, ordinal rankings. Right? Okay, and then P stochastically R dominates if this holds for any I. And the uh, mechanism uh, just chooses a random assignment. Right. Then, okay, you can also define as D efficiency or stochastic dominance efficiency. So, for any profile, you cannot find another distribution which stochastically dominates. Uh, and this is actually here stronger than exposed efficiency. Of course, this implies exposed efficiency, but not the other way around. Now, strategy proveness, again, so truth telling is on a weekly dominant strategy, or this means that for any R and I, well, phi i r so has to get i dominates phi i r minus i. And again, recall, okay, you can just report your ordinal ranking. You cannot report your utility function, but this is an equivalent that for any utility function, you should report your induced uh, ordinal ranking. And that's what I wrote here. Okay. Then mv freeness, okay, so this is again in terms of stochastic dominance, so PIR stochastically dominates P here. And then, okay, then uh, you might also have deterministic mechanisms, or this is it for right? any profile you have catch probability one, and then phi is symmetric. Mm -hmm. so, well, for any profile R and for any IJ, uh, but they should get the same uh, marginal distribution. So if two agents have the same uh, preference, then they should get same probabilities for any R. <clears throat> uh, history. I will just say some a little bit something. Sorry, what's this? No, no, what uh, about deterministic assignments? Also, I mean, this is something uh, might be interesting for people who don't necessarily understand. Yeah. So, some originally this started like with uh, exchanges of houses, right? So without money or any agent just owned one object, I owned OI, right? And then the top trading cycles mechanism. A very known solution. So, are there people who don't know this? So, this is just like again, <clears throat> so, uh, so ju just that anybody has a strict ranking, right? And then uh, you, you, just point to your first house, which is on the top of the ranking. Your endowment points to you. And then, okay, anybody points to one house, you have at least one cycle. Then you execute this cycle, right? So the top cycle. And agents get objects according to this cycle, right? And then, uh, while well, those people leave, and then agents point to the most preferred objects among the remaining a very is a very important mechanism. I mean, the outcome is actually the unique strong for competitive assignment, right? It's also the unique mechanism then, which is individual rational stretch proof and efficient. It's not difficult to show, actually. Uh, and then okay for weak preferences, 
for weak preferences, you would be indifferent between objects. You would have to do something. Okay, what could you do? You could break ties according to some fixed manner. When I have worked on this, uh, I have a paper in 2014 where I characterized the TTC mechanism is fixed tie breaking. And for weak preferences, also there exist mechanisms which are in the window rational structure. And okay, it's also in detail discussed in the Nobel Prize by Ross and Champlain, this model of the exchange in all these old. I mean, history also over the past uh, 25 years, let's say, I mean, you could view this not where you have uh, individual endowments, but you have a social endowment. So, uh, yeah, so the set of objects, the social endowments is more like in this talks, and the civil dictatorship has been uh, characterized by Svensson mm -hmm. in terms of stretch improvements, non boxes, and neutrality. But then uh, there's an important contribution by Sudo uh, Papai, when I mean, we introduced some, a big class of mechanisms, hierarchical exchange mechanisms. Of which, like both theory dictatorship and TTC, are, are special cases. Right, and then for weak preferences, I also have shown in one of my papers that you cannot do much, or you can have only indifferences at the bottom, or then otherwise you get possibilities. But there are also other directions on uh, looking at priority based assignment. Area or case of where you have a fixed priority for each object. Okay, here uh, we can make a break if you want to, or you can have questions. Olivier? Yeah, if there is no questions, uh, let's keep going. I mean, I'm very quick. I know these online things, you always tend to run. <laughs> we have time, so. Yeah, OK. Yeah, OK, so this, then I will come, let's say, call it to the core of, of my talk. <clears throat> oh, OK, so random assignment, random assignment. Right. What could you use? OK. One, Naive mechanism is okay, you ignore preferences and you just uniformly assign objects to agents for any agent gets an object with a probability one over n, right? So I don't look at the preferences. This is virtual proof and every free, but it's not exposed weakly efficient. Random theory dictatorship is what I. And already the stretch proof symmetric and exposed efficient, but it's not maybe a probabilistic serial. Another mechanism, an important mechanism, maybe less known, but it's like eating. Or well, yeah, you have those preferences. What you do is so any agent he starts eating at his most preferred object, right? And then okay. This is at uniform speed, so let's say if two agents have the same object at the top, A, then this object is eaten awake uh, after uh, time one half, right? After time one, so after time one half, this is gone, so they switch to the next spot, right? So at any time an object is finished, an agent switches to the next spot. And then you just collect those uh, uh, eight and shares, and then uh, these are your random assignments. This is MV3 and uh, SD efficient, but if I like stretch. So, for instance, uh, your name theory dictatorship is not, uh, is not MV3. I mean, here's one example. I mean, you can see that one, he receives C. 
only uh, when he picks last. <clears throat> right, because the three, two, or two, three, they pick A, B, then I get C. Otherwise, I cannot get uh, C because otherwise, if I'm not last, I pick something else. Now you see that three receives C whenever he, you only have the two order two, one, three, right? He has to pick last. Uh, but then he gets only C if uh, one picks A and then two C, right? Uh, two A and one B, right? So one over six, right? But then you see that here one, uh, M with uh, three, because three gets on A and B five over six, whereas he gets four over six on A and B, or he gets higher probability C than uh, three. Right? So random theory dictatorship is not M with three. It's also not um, ex ante efficient or SD efficient, right? Because you look at this, right? So you. Here, though, if you have the order of one, two, then he picks A, B, right? So one, two get pro, uh, with positive probability B, three, four get with positive probability A, but ex ante efficient would be that one and two get each probability one half on A, and three and four get probability one half on, on uh, B, and then they get one fourth on C. Pareto dominates in terms of stochastic dominance. But this is my norm, right? So we know that uh, stretch proof and equal treatment of equals is not compatible with SD efficiency, right? And also stretch proofness and MV freeness is not compatible with exposed efficiency. So let's look at unanimity. So so unanimous profile again is a profile where anybody ranks a different object. Okay, but this is like a nice situation. So any agent can then get his most preferred object. Right? Then when you have unanimity, where well, there's no distinction between exposed and ex ante matrix, right? Because there's only one assignment, right? And, and this is also where, uh, those are the profiles where MV freeness and, MV and efficiency are compatible. Because everybody gets his first object, I mean, not any, anybody else, but those are the only ones, right? But instead of full unanimity, we well, we'll just require Q unanimity. This means, okay, so in any for any unanimity profile, I should get my most preferred object with probability greater or equal than Q. Okay. And in mechanism that is zero unanimity, uniform assignment set is is one over n. And this is a result of that paper. So when you have at least three agents and the mechanism that is by stretch proof and envy freeness, it cannot be Q unanimous or Q greater than Q two over n. Right. So if you have three agents, this bound is two over. Right. I mean, also the nice thing, of course, you have zero unanimity is uh, possible for any mechanism, or you go from zero to one, and you can vary, and we find this exact time. Also, okay, we'll talk. yeah, we'll talk about this. I mean, you could replace replace uh, Q unanimity by exposed Q efficiency. This is the same when unanimous profiles, and then you get the same conclusion because just Q unanimity exposed Q efficiency for unanimous profile. You may also replace Q unanimity by Q object unanimity, meaning that okay, you have a 
one object, one agent ranks it at the top, the other rank agents ranking at the very bottom, so this agent should get it at least for the Q. Or when you have the exposed efficiency, you would get it for sure because nobody else wants it. And that's also actually a mechanism satisfying all those properties and two over any and this is what we call random dictatorship equal to efficient. So this just says, okay, so choose one agent as random. Okay, when he's chosen, he picks his most preferred object, right? He gets it. And all the other objects are distributed equally among the other agents. So whatever he chooses, he picks it, and the other ones get, or is it like uniform assignment among the other agents for the remaining objects. And this satisfies all the properties. So it's like proof every free tool of any anonymous. It's even when you have three agents, it has a natural characterization. Right? When you have three agents, it's a unique mechanism. That is saying exposed weak efficiency, stretch improvements, and inventory. So you don't need to go over your end unanimity. Or this distinguishes already this mechanism from random theory dictatorship and uh, the, the probabilistic theory or the eating mechanism. So, say, random theory dictatorship is not MV free and uh, probability. Listic theory is not stretch. Okay. Now we go to the main result of the same paper. So, so now I look for, at a preference of, I denote by Rix just the preference restricted to uh, the weak upper consistency. Of R A X. So as a preference, I have X somewhere. But then I just look at the restrictions. Now bounded invariant says is there any profile and for any R I prime, right? So if I don't change the preference here above, right? Then the assignments of the the assignment probabilities of the object here above shouldn't change. So this is an invariant notion. So again, so let's say, for instance, I manipulate and I keep my same top ranked object, then uh, bounded invariant says that this top ranked object should be allocated identically among all agents for those two problems, R and R I prime. Stochastic dominance among mechanisms. So F as D dominates uh, G, right? Let's see if for any profile R, well, F R dominates G R. So any agent R I uh, weakly prefers F I R to G I R in terms of stochastic. And of course, for some profile, you should have three. Right, so this is a very strong notion, right? And our main point is that on the no disposal domain, so everybody ranks being unmet. The bottom, if a mechanism satisfies exposed efficiency, bounded invariance, and stretch improvement, then there exists no bounded invariance and stretch approved mechanism which SD dominates. Proof is quite involved. It takes like six pages and has some double induction. The induction step is the induction basis is very difficult. The induction step is even more difficult. But the consequences, of course, now RSD satisfies all the properties. So it cannot be 
SD dominated by any other mechanism that is like how the positive result, but the same is also true. I mean, you could take uh, weighted versions of RSD, right? So we attach different weights to the different orders and apply SD, right? Those weights could come from, I mean, you would like to favor certain minority groups, and disadvantaged groups and things, right? <clears throat> And I mean, also, I mean, you cannot in CRM3 exposed efficiency to exposed weak efficiency, right? For instance, random dictatorship can be equal division satisfies all properties, but is SD dominated by RS. Uh, there are still several questions which remain open. Moment. I mean, so for instance, can we drop uh, bounded invariance in theorem three from the second, at least from the second mechanism? Right. Also, I mean, can you get a characterization of RSD? I mean, there's this long standing open question whether RSD is characterized by stretch improvement symmetry and exposed efficiency. We do not know many people have thought about it over the past 20 years. Nobody has been able to solve this. I mean, it's known for five agents now by computational methods. Uh, yes, that's what I wrote here. This paper by Brad, Krieger, and Norman. From the Pisha and Troy, and they characterize RSD with some. Let's say there's a strong notion of uh, stretch improvements or also stretch improvements. Uh, for the sake of time, I will not be able to talk about the proof. But I mean, the first idea is okay, you have, uh, when you have an exposed efficient assignment, well, then for any agent, there exists an object which is non top ranked, which is below his assignment. And then, okay, the idea is you look at the profiles where the mechanisms don't coincide. And then we know that the, this must be non empty, right? And then we just look for one object set, we look at the lower counter set. But we look at the lower counter set of the non top ranked objects, right? So we count the number of objects which are in the lower counter set and uh, which are below set. And then uh, for, the, for this profile R, well, we order those numbers lexicograph like in a non increasing order. And then we try to make this number this as small as possible according to the lexicographic order, right? And then what we show actually, once you're here, well, the random assignment of set must be identical. So that's like the injection basis, and then you continue. Once you have this, you stain the set, you take another object Y, and Uh, yeah, so here we can make another break or have questions. I don't know. You told me. Uh, if not, then I go on. Can I ask one more question? Oh, yeah, of course, of course. Um, so um unanimity is a really natural efficiency notion but it kind of only applies at one preference profile these very special everybody wants different things yes um 
And then the fairness notion, envy freeness. My only question is like this, on the other hand, applies at every single preference profile. Do you know of any kind of fairness notion where we get some more freedom like we have for unanimity in that it only applies kind of in rarer cases? Maybe then we would have a nice mechanism. Do you know of any such notion? I mean, you can always say, okay, RSD satisfies. Exposed efficiency, unanimity, and symmetry. Sure. What's a stronger notion of, uh, let's say, or notion between symmetry and every freeness, yeah, that's something um, what you have to think. Mm -hmm. um, so there might be one that's interesting. Maybe, I don't know. Sure. I mean, Thanks. Yeah, I mean, of course, I understand that every freeness is a stone, but this is like the right, natural right. property and Agree. It still go, goes to the well. I mean, the probabilistic series they were proposed because also they they're enemy free. I mean, they are free, so they are these eating, mm -hmm. but they are not stretchy. Mm -hmm. And of mm -hmm. course, I mean, this is the question what we ask: What do you do if you have stretchy proofness and enemy freeness, and how much efficiency mm -hmm. or how much unanimity equivalent can you get? Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, okay, then I go on. I have more time than I expected. <laughs> this was a one and a half hour talking. <laughs> okay. Uh, and okay, what you can also do, um, you don't have a necessary. Um, that being unassigned at the bottom, uh, being unassigned is ranked at the bottom, right? So, so then you have weak non wastefulness if no unassigned object is desired by an unassigned, unassigned uh, agent. So, you have an object which is not assigned, and then somebody wants it. Right? Uh, so we still get an impossibility when you have this so uh, weak non wastefulness, right? And then okay, at some point you get a possibility, but something very even weaker. <laughs> In sense, okay, so now we have the situation, okay, I'm I don't rank an essay or objects or I just Okay, what could happen? Okay, you could have something like a weak unanimity. Weak unanimity, okay, you have still, everybody wants to have a different objects first, but everybody wants nothing else. Right? So I only want one object, nothing else. Any other agent also wants one object, nothing else. Right? And this is at the top. Right? Uh, yeah, so... And then, okay, this is like unanimity for, for profiles where agents find exactly. And then, okay, you can find a mechanism which satisfies weak unanimity, stretch proofness, and And this is like a modification of uniform. Uh, some other thing we have in the working paper for the poor domain, okay. Also the notion, which is like, is I think interesting or something what we call object by object domination. Right? So which just says, okay, so P, uh, Distribution P, uh, object by object, dominates Q. Right? If for any I and O, uh, we have PIO greater or equal than QIO. There's no preference, nothing. Right? You just look at the probability. So this makes no reference to the profile, right? And then it's also clear if two 
uh, distributions are individual rational, right? So this means individual rational, so I don't get an an acceptable object with uh, positive probability. So if <clears throat> p object by object dominates q, then p stochastically r dominates q, right? Because somebody gets weakly higher, but for any object I get a weakly higher. So I don't need need to calculate. Right? Then what we show, I mean, this takes five lines, so object by object domination. We take a, a two mechanisms which are individual, rational, and stretch it on the full dimension. Now, if F S D dominates G, then you can find a profile or hat. Such that F or hat object by object dominates. So you can type out an instance. Take much, but then once you have this, I mean, you can actually get some corollaries. I mean, the two results were shown by Herdius or maximum control. Individual rational stretch proof on the full domain. <clears throat> But if G is exalted, weakly non wasteful, so it always uh, gives probability one to acceptable objects, and F cannot dominate uh, G. And also, if S, F, SD dominates G, then F must be of greater size than G, in the sense that because you have this object by object domination, so at some profile, F must give more probability to objects than G. I mean, this, uh, <clears throat> okay. Conclusion. Okay, so much. I mean, maybe I will mention one other thing we did in our chat paper. We also did allow to throw some um, objects to be right. So this means like. So even though everybody ranks all objects except as acceptable, I might uh, not assign all objects. And actually then, actually you can increase the Q unit. So you're, you're able to find a mechanism which is stretch proof and MV free and which satisfies q you know maybe with q equal to 17 over 18 17 over 18 greater than 2 over 3 okay and that's it from my side so i was able to present two papers 